Hello everyone and welcome to the StepSend GraphQL Challenge 2022. My name is Roy and I work at StepSend. With StepSend you can declaratively create GraphQL APIs for any data source. And in this challenge you can win great prizes by using StepSend for any GraphQL project. What kind of project you build is completely up to you, whether it's a mobile app, a web application, something with IoT or even Web3. If you decide to go for Web3, we have special prizes for this, as you can see on our Hackathon website. If you head over to stepsend.devpost.com, you can find all the rules for this hackathon, including the submission rules for your project. But to be sure, the only thing you really need is a Stepsend GraphQL API. Before showing you how to build the Stepsend GraphQL API and how to use it in the project that you will be submitting, let's first have a quick look at GraphQL. The GraphQL is known to be a query language for APIs. It is different than REST APIs in example, because they will let you dynamically query data and also let you combine data from different resources. On the GraphQL website, you can find all information about what GraphQL actually is and how it works. And to be sure, GraphQL is part of the GraphQL Foundation. It used to be set up by Facebook, now Meta, but since two years ago, or three years actually, it has been part of the GraphQL Foundation, which Stepsen is a proud member of. So this query language for APIs is a declarative way to query your data. Instead of REST APIs, in which you're unsure with data to expect, or you need to combine multiple endpoints to get your data that you need in your application, with the GraphQL, you can get exactly the data you need in exactly the same format that you requested it in. Also, you can combine many resources in a single request. So no longer do you have to send different REST API endpoint calls. Instead, you do just one and get data for all the information you need. And with StepSend, as I mentioned before, you can create a GraphQL API declaratively, meaning you don't have to write a lot of code, just a little bit of code in order to create a GraphQL API. You can even use a CLI to generate the API for you. That way you don't even have to write any code at all, but just use a CLI to let the StepSend declaratively build your GraphQL API. There's also a second way to get a GraphQL API with StepSend, and this is to our GraphQL Studio. In StepSend GraphQL Studio, you can find pre-built GraphQL APIs for a lot of different data sources coming from third parties, such as Airtable, GitHub, or Discord. But first, let's have a look at the StepSend CLI. You can find information about the StepSend CLI by going to the StepSend website. In this website, you will find the tab called Getting Started, in which you can find all the information to get started building with StepSend. The first thing you actually need is to install the StepSend CLI. And the StepSend CLI is running on Node, meaning if you don't have Node installed in your device, you should do so in order to use the CLI. If you go to the website of Node, you can actually find installation instructions for Windows, Linux, and Mac. As I already have Node installed on my device, I can just hop over to, to my editor. In my VS Code editor, I've already created a new project for this hackathon. In here, I only need to check my Node version, it looks like I'm currently running version 13, but it's okay. But the latest actual stable version is version 18. I can now run npm install globally because I need to install StepSend globally and then StepSend. This will install the StepSend CLI, which I'll be needing in order to create a GraphQL API for my local machine. So while this is running, let's get back to the getting started section. Because the second thing you need is setting up a StepSend account. For this, you can just sign up or log in if you already have an account. Signing up and logging in is both very easy because you only need to provide an email address and a password, or you can use the social login using GitHub. As I already have an account, I can just sign in using my username and password. And this will take me back to the getting started experience on the StepSend website. As you can see, my account is name is called Beaverdam, and I also have an admin key which I need to log in. I can just copy this endpoint and go back to my terminal in my VS Code project. And over there, I see the project has already been the the CLI has already been installed. So let's double check this by running stepsend version, and then I can do stepsend login. Here, I will need to provide my username and also my admin key. So my username was beaverdam, and then my admin key is something I copy-paste directly from here. 
So this will log me into StepSend, after which I'm able to access my account details from the CLI as well. An example, I can run StepSend UMI to check my StepSend account details. So let me just clear this terminal. So we have a fresh terminal to start with and head back to the StepSend getting started experience. In here, you can select where your data is coming from. As I told you earlier, with StepSend, you can create a GraphQL API for any data source, whether that's SQL, NoSQL, REST API, GraphQL API, pre-built APIs, or you can also try out some of our examples. So if you don't know how to set up a database yourself, you might be able to use a cloud provider for this. There are many great out there. On our blog, you can even find setup instructions for a relative new database called PlanetScale, which is based on SQL. So if you're looking to build with a MySQL database, it can be nice to hop over there. Also, if you like REST APIs or NoSQL databases, we have set up examples for you. An example with NoSQL, you can try and go with Datastix Estra, HarperDB or MongoDB, or for SQL, you can also select Postgres. If you want to build with a REST API, you can also use a CLI. Let's try first out importing a MySQL database. And for this, we also set up some examples for you. So in case you're not sure how to do this, head over to our example. And you can just copy paste these commands in your terminal project. If I go back here, I can run steps and import my SQL. It will first ask me how I would like to name my endpoints. Just go with something generic that's been generated for me. And then it will ask me what is my host, which one my SQL database is available at. My database name as well. My username. And again, I can just copy paste this from our getting started example. If you start building a hackathon project, it's advised to use your own database instead of this example database, because that way you have complete control over the data. So after inserting the password, it will introspect my MySQL database and generate the GraphQL API for me. Then here I can find some files that contain all the different queries that we're able to generate from the database. And all these queries are something you can try out. As soon as you start running, Steps and, steps and start. By running steps and start, the configuration to the database and also the GraphQL schema will be deployed to steps and cloud, after which you'll be able to use it from any of the projects you want. So the two ways to actually explore the steps and GraphQL API is either through the production ready end endpoint that is being displayed in your terminal or by going to the localhost version. And this localhost version is only for local exploration. You cannot use this from a project. It can only work from your browser. Let's try it out. So this is something we call the graphical interface. And in this interface, you can explore your API. So you can find all the different queries that are there. An example to get a list of orders. And then query this data directly in this browser. Also, you can send this query over using curl or using JavaScript, or maybe even using Python, Rust, or C Sharp. It's completely up to you in whatever programming language you want to build your project. I'll be going back. I can also add new queries here. An example, I now have a query to get the orders, which is called get order list. But I can also have a query to get a list of customers. I can do get customer list and get customers with their ID, email, and name. Now, if I want to combine orders and customers, this is also something I can do using StepSend. For this, I only need to create a new query to get a customer by their ID. Just copy paste this one, put it below here. So what I want to do, I want to get a customer by ID. Put a customer here which will be coming from my customer table in my MySQL database. And as I told you, this is a mock database that you can only use for testing purposes that we pre-populated with the data you already saw. And here I can select a customer by its ID, and then I can just save this. And StepSend will now automatically redeploy this to the cloud. See, after it's finished, let's refresh this page. So be sure that my schema is up to date in the graphical interface. And here now I cannot only query customers in a list, but I can also query them by their ID. So let's say I want the customer with ID one, and I also want the email, the ID, 
and the name. You can see I only get the customer with the ID of one. And if I go to my order list, get rid of these things. For my order list, I can also get the customer ID. So I can get the ID of the order, but also the customer ID and the date the order was created. Meaning from my GraphQL schema, I can also make a connection between orders and customers based on this customer ID. So to do this, you actually go to the type definition of order. Doing here, say I have customer ID, but I also want a customer field which returns the type customer, which is the same as my get customer by ID query returns. Here I can say add materializer, which is a custom directive from Stepsend to stitch together data from different sources or from different tables in case you're working with a database. What you can also do with Stepsend is import a REST API and then combine them using add materializer as well. This way you can get data from both a database and a REST API all in one GraphQL schema. If you want to know how to do this, please help head over to our YouTube channel. On our YouTube channel, you can find more videos, also videos showing how to combine different data sources or how to set up StepSend for more difficult use cases, such as microservices, um, or maybe even testing it or using it with third parties APIs, such as Airtable. Let me make this connection real quick. So get customer by ID. I want to stitch them together on the customer ID field which I can just insert here, customer ID, and then save this. So Stepsen will already redeploy this new schema to the cloud, and then make sure that I can query it from my endpoint. I would be refreshing this. So I can now get a customer by its ID. I can get a list of orders. Within my list of orders, I can now also get customer fields. Something is wrong. Missing ID. Quickly check. So I have a customer. Get customer by ID. Field called customer ID here. Get customer by ID. Let me see what this looks like. ID. Let me see. Oh, this is an uppercase I. So it's actually the issue. So this is one other nice thing to see. The steps and CLI will also give you feedback in your terminal whenever something goes wrong. So let me insert customer ID with an uppercase I and then redeploy this to the cloud. Now let's wait for a bit to see if it actually was successful. Looks like it is. Refresh this page. And now I should be able to not only get my orders and my customers separately, I should also be able to get customer information for my orders. Let's get rid of this customer and actually get the customer ID here as well. Get ID and name. And now this is all queried in one request. And as I told you before, you can also mix in different REST APIs, GraphQL APIs, other databases, or any type of data source you can think about. And this is all being done by using GraphQL's using StepSense declarative way of building GraphQL schemas. And then if you want to use this in any of your projects, make sure to use this endpoint. So this endpoint is your production ready endpoint, and this is the endpoint you should be using whenever sending a request to your API from an application. I will be heading over to the steps and docs in example. You can find information on how to do this. Slash docs. Here's this whole section on connecting to steps in. We go here, connect to steps in. So this is one of the doc pages you should be using as soon as you start to integrate steps and into your project. You should first get your endpoint URL, which is the one we saw in the browser. You should then get your steps and API key, which is already being translated here as I'm logged in. So if you log in into steps and from the website, your API key will be filled in there. And then you can call your endpoint an example from JavaScript. And this is already being pre-filled. So I would be copy pasting this, this inside, inside my project. I can actually call the steps and GraphQL API from a JavaScript project. You can also call it, of course, from any other uh, application. The only thing you need to do is sending a header using your authorization key. So this was the first way to get a steps and GraphQL API. There is also a second way to get a steps and GraphQL API, which is not by writing code or by using our CLI, but it is by using steps and GraphQL Studio. And in steps and GraphQL Studio, you can find an overview of different GraphQL APIs that we created for you. 
an example to get the current weather from AccuWeather, uh, get data from a CMS like Contentful, or get data directly from your GitHub account. And in here, you can also even provide your GitHub authorization key and query live data. And this is all being done from this portal, meaning that you don't need to set up steps on yourself. Instead, you use one of our APIs. And when you're doing so, make sure to actually put extra effort in your application on the front end, because one of the criteria for this hackathon is making sure you have a nice schema design. And if we've designed the schema for you, what's there to design? But in here, you can also use mock data, an example, and also get different um, combined data from different sources again. So you can find all these different combinations. In here, you can also find a web tree combination. So if you happen to know to work with either scan, Morales, or Infura, but you don't know how to write code, you can use a web tree combination to do this for you. And then the only thing you need to build is a web tree application based on these tools. And actually, if you head over to the steps and GitHub, steps and GitHub, you can also find examples that we built for you. So in here, you can find steps and dev examples. You can find examples to get started with your favorite programming languages. An example with Postgres, Python, React Native, uh, even with SvelteKit, or maybe with Gatsby, if that's what you prefer. And also, if your hackathon project is actually successful in implementing a new technology, you're more than happy to accept pull requests into this repository. Also, if you go to the steps and organization, you can find more examples. An example to work with APIs, find any of our workshops, and also you can find our Web3 application there. And as I mentioned, there's a special price if you work with Web3 projects. So if you're into Web3, make sure to head over to this repository as well and get started using our Web3 example. So all the information for the hackathon can be found on the website stepsend.devpost.com. And if you have any questions, we actually will be setting up a uh, office hours weekly, and we also have a Discord channel. So you would be going to this link, you can find our Steps and Discord channel and just join us and ask your questions there. So this invite will take you to StepSense Discord, which you can use to ask your questions. But there's also a discussion section on the DevPost website, which you can also use to, you, to ask questions. We also will be using this page to send you any updates in case there are any. And with this, I really hope that you will get started with StepSense. And most of all, you have a lot of fun building GraphQL applications for this hackathon. The judging period can be found in our schedule, which is actually meaning that by August 1st, we will know whoever won this hackathon. And I truly hope you're the one to win this hackathon. So happy hacking, and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.